What's going on beautiful people? Today we're going to be doing an awesome ecosphere in this bowl we've got here. Now it's a really awesome size look. Don't ask me where to get it from. I got it from like a local sort of home improvement store and they just had, they don't even have them there now, but it was a really good price. My wife actually picked it up, brought it home and said, do you want this? And I was like, yes, jackpot. Now one of the problems with bowls is uh, the lights. Probably gonna have to turn all of those off and just be in the dark. Okay, that's a little bit better, but obviously there's all the aquariums around me. They need to stay on just whilst we're doing the build, but for the final shots, I'll make sure it's looking absolutely perfect. Now with a build like this, you could actually just use ambient light if you want to, but I'm gonna add a little light to it as well. I just think it will look way better and the plants will grow better too. They'll still grow with ambient light, the plants that I've got in mind, but with a light, they'll grow greener, faster and better. And this is the light that I'm gonna be using. Well, <laughs> I've got to put it together, but it's a Chihiros, I think it's C2, something like that. I don't know, I got it ages ago. Uh, just screws in here and you put the bowl on it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I don't really have a clue what I'm doing here. <laughs> oh, hang on, there's some little rubber gaskety things that go on somewhere. <laughs> there we go. We have light. Just that bowl in the middle. Okay, that is lighting everything up really nicely. Slightest of tilts to the light, but pfft, that, that'll do. I spent ages fiddling with it. In the end, I'll wrap some black electrical tape around this section here to make sure that it stood up even higher because otherwise it was just gonna sit on the lip. But I think that's, well, it's not perfect, but it's almost perfect. And that is good enough for me. Now this bowl is gonna have no filter in it. Well, it will, the plants will be the filtration. So no like mechanical filtration. Also the substrate system as well, it's gonna harbor bacteria that will just like consume any of the nasties that would otherwise be in the tank water. The plants will as well. They'll use the ammonia, nitrite and everything to grow. Now I've done this many times before and every time I make the same mistake of putting too fast growth growing plants in the tank that I can't easily remove. It's a good idea to have fast growing plants initially in your bowl because they're really gonna help with that water quality and get the whole ecosystem started really fast. But as time goes on and the slower growing plants root right in and get bigger, I wanna be able to remove those fast growing plants or I'm never gonna keep up with the maintenance on it. If it's your bowl, you probably will. But as you can see, I've got quite a few tanks to be taken care of. So yeah, it makes it really difficult for small tanks if I've got them chock a block full of fast growing plants. Now, as with any planted tank, the substrate system is very important. If we get this bit right, it means that you have to do basically nothing to the tank apart from top it up with water. And who doesn't want that? Now, as with any planted tank, we are going to need a substrate system. And for that, I'm going to be using this gravel here. It's basically crushed lava rock, which makes it really porous. Now, if you can't get hold of that, any normal sort of pea gravel or anything like that will be absolutely fine. But this stuff's just extra good because it's so porous, it can harbor a lot of bacteria in the spaces inside the rocks. So just make a pile of the crushed lava rock or gravel in the middle of the bowl. I'm going to use about four or five scoops. And by the time I add some extra stuff to this in a minute, we're going to be filling up about an eighth of the bowl. I mean, that's very specific but you know you don't have to be exactly that now this on its own is inert and it doesn't have any nutrients in it so we're going to add that to it and this is the stuff that i'm going to be using it's aquatic compost so it's like normal compost but it's had a lot of the organics removed and floated off in the top this is basically the stuff that you have in ponds so you can get it from like pond shops you usually put it in baskets submerge them underwater and then plant lilies and things like that in them so it's used to being underwater and that's why I like using it. So we wanna add roughly equal parts of the soil to the base layer of gravel that we've got in there. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, so don't stress too much about it. And then I'm gonna mix it all into the gravel as well. So the point of that is so that we don't get any nasty sort of pockets of the uh, soil compressing and it just ends up possibly smelling. But if you mix it in with all this gravel, tends to just sit better. I, don't, I can't explain the science behind it. Some people say that that won't happen without water flow, but in my experience, it just works out way, way better. It's almost like the natural flow of the water in the tank, you know, once you've got like inhabitants in there, allows it to travel through. And in doing so, the plants produce oxygen, which will also oxygenate the substrate. I'm also gonna be adding some root tabs to the mix. Now this is just to give it some extra long-term nutrients. The root systems will find these tabs 
and just ensure that it's getting everything that it needs. I found that doing this stops any deficiencies that you can sometimes see in the leaves like pinholes or yellowing. I wouldn't say it's absolutely essential, but it's gonna take it all to the next level and just make the whole tank more vibrant and healthy. And a healthy tank means healthy inhabitants. So I'm breaking each tab in half so I get more coverage. Place them evenly around the bowl substrate and push them a little bit into the soil. Now we don't really wanna see this sort of ugly base layer. So I've made sure that it's not coming up higher than the sort of viewpoint in the foreground. And I've banked it up more at the back, not a huge amount, but definitely sort of sloping up at the back there. That's where the majority of the plants will be, you see, because if you put them in the foreground, you just can't see anything in the bowl. Next up, you wanna use a sand just to cap the whole lot. I've got one that's got a mixture of different gravels and that in as well, it looks authentic. Authentic to what? I don't know, but look, see, it's just basically sand. And it's got like other bits of gravel and stuff that's collected in different tanks over time. So this is something I pulled out from another setup I had. I like to reuse stuff where I can and it has the added benefit of looking a lot more natural with all those different grade sizes in it. You never see just one uniform size do you unless you're sort of at a sandy beach I guess. And we don't need to go too crazy with the capping like an inch or so on top is plenty. Like I say, this uh, soil doesn't really matter if a little bit of it gets in the water column, it's not gonna hurt at all. I know you'll see a lot of other YouTubers saying like you need two inches of capping and whatnot, but I don't feel that you do, and it's not been a problem before with this kind of setup. Again, purely because of that aquatic compost, it's not regular garden compost. There we go, that's all sort of capped in, raised up slightly at the back. And now it's ready to put in some hardscape. Now, when designing a hardscape for a bowl, we want it like not huge in terms of surface area it's gonna take up. And also I found if you do it in a sort of arc towards the back more, the foreground stays clear and it just looks so much better. And you can like look into the bowl then rather than everything being like magnified and right in your face. Yeah, so kind of like, kind of like that look. That's the sort of shape you want, not, not all screw with, but that's where I sort of want to line the majority of the hardscape. You have some smaller little detail bits in the foreground. So I'm going to start off with a couple of really nice rocks that I think complement the, uh, the gravel that we've got in this tank. I'm not overthinking it, just place them in. We can work out the small details as we go along. Quite like the look of this one, actually. I think that's quite flat though. So we need something with height. Uh, probably this one here can come up a lot higher. So you see how instantly that gives us a lot more sort of impact. It feels more 3D, like this side's coming out at us. Um, and then we can have the wood sort of going off that way, and a little bit up this, this side as well. We've got all this foreground clear for a little bit more detail as well. Oh, and I found some really nice manzanita wood. This is just the sort of stuff I think that looks great in a bowl. Another piece as well. That looks awesome. And a little bit coming out the top, just again, brings the, the inside out and just adds the whole thing, I think. Yeah, I really like that. It's got like action, but we've got a gap over this side for some nice plants to be a focal point as well. There's still plenty of room behind us just to get like some good stems in there. They'll sort of loop upwards and over the top. So you get like an umbrella of plants. It works really well. And then you've got, like I say, that open foreground. But we do need a bit more detail down here because it's a bit lonely with just those couple of pebbles. So it's nothing too drastic. Just add in a little bit more sort of texture. Push the... Um, pebbles, flat pebbles, into the sand a little bit and it looks far more natural because that's sort of how they sit in a river system as the water runs over them. That nice one there, a little black one. They don't all have to be matching, remember? I think it looks better when they're not, to be honest. Oh, I've got some really nice pinky coloured ones here. Very sort of different, but I like it. And then just a little sprinkle of these darker pebbles, just for a little bit of like accent. Not too many, because I don't want the lightness of the sand to go. There we go, I'm loving that. Now I need to make sure that this wood is glued to those big rocks, otherwise it's just gonna float up out. And as always, we're gonna be using the super glue gel. This is cyanoacrylate and it's completely safe for fish and everything. It just dries instantly like a plastic. A little bit of water helps it stick as well. Just gonna wet it all down. So that is everything all solid and in place. Tap test, look, not moving, we're all good. That means we can now move on to the planting. And as always, I like to start with a fern right in that middle section. I don't want anything too big in this one, just sort of, just peeking over the top. I think that'll look good because then we've got the stems all coming up behind it. And I've got loads of them in here. Excuse me, babes. 
Yeah, so we've got some really gorgeous ferns at the back. They're gonna look great. So there is the plant in, looking good. Just peeking over the top, it's actually drooped backwards a little bit, but when the water's up, it won't do that. It'll sort of sit upright, um, but we can still get behind it and put in whatever we need as well. Next up is the foreground plants. We've got a decent amount of light hitting the bottom there. So I'm gonna go with some Monte Carlo and Glossostigma. They should actually spread pretty quickly, provided we don't block it out with too many stems, but there shouldn't be any reason why we won't get like a real nice spread across this foreground section. Not too much, just a little bit for detail. I quite like the look of the rocks and the sand as it is. So I was going to put Glossostigma as well, but that's just the, uh, the Monte Carlo. I think if I put any more, it's just going to be too much. Like I said, I want to be able to see all these details and the Monte Carlo will keep it like that because it sort of grows flat and downwards. Um, Glossostigma can sometimes grow a little bit taller if you don't trim it, that is. So I will now fill the bowl up and then I can have my stem plants after. I always like to do it that way. You can just see how everything's sitting then and what sort of height it's at and if it's looping over too much, just much, much easier. Actually, before I do that, I'm thinking I want a nice piece of boost in this middle section here, just as a focal point. And then just on some of these join areas, some tiny little bits of Anubius as well. I think that'll tie it all in nicely and then fill up. So over in this plant storage tanklet, I've got some really nice boosts. Look at that one there. Definitely using that one. And then we've got some little pieces of Anubius as well. Perfect. So what I've done is taken a little pebble look and I've just attached it with some super glue it's absolutely fine as long as you just keep it on the rhizome area you know underneath the roots push it on and it'll just continue to grow on that rock and the underside doesn't look too tasty so i'm just going to put this little pebble there a little bit more detail a bit more color perfect so that's like a larger version of boost philandra then i've got like a a small sort of nano one that I'm going to put next to it as well. And this one is Booster Philandra Biblis, and these are from Aquafleur. All my plants are from Aquafleur, and um, they're such good quality. I mean, you can see that, can't you? In the UK, you can get these any, there's so many shops available. I can put a little link below actually to where you can get them, um, and in Europe as well. A little search locator, it tells you where, what shops should, should stock them. So if you want to get hold of them, it's not like a sponsored video or anything, it's just they're really good quality, and I think you guys should have access to them. Sorry if you're in America, they're, they're not there <laughs> yet, anyway. Okay, now we're looking good and we can fill it up with water. Nice and slowly though, remember, we don't want to disturb all that substrate system, so try and put it on some gravel or something like that. I, actually, I'm going to pour a little bit more gravel in that section there, so then it doesn't, the water sort of just dissipates through it and doesn't disturb everything. There we go, look how good is that looking already? We're nowhere near done as well, but see what I mean by the, the shape that I made the actual hardscape in? When it's filled up with water, everything's kind of magnified a little bit. So it's kind of bringing it flat in front of you, which I think works really well. And now we can put our stem plants in and really bring it to life. And of course, we've got quite a few to choose from. There's like every single tank has got some kind of stem plant that I can take out and use. Particularly this one, it's got some um, umbrasum, I think it's called. That needs trimming back anyway. Some of it's starting to die off underneath because it's not getting any light. So that'll actually make sense. We've got some nice Junkus repens as well, which I'd like to utilize just to give it more of a wild look. And there's some fantastic reds going on right now. This Rotala HRA in the uh, rainbow fish tank. We've got Rotala green as well, some Ludwigias. All of these need trimming back, so it makes sense to use them. So there's a nice little selection of reds. We've got the Rotala HRA and a little bit of Ludwigia. I don't want too much because reds can be overpowering, especially in a small bowl. And the fish that we're gonna be putting in, they've got like a red tinge to it, orangey red. So I wanna just have a little punch, but not too much.
Okay, that's the reds looking great. Remember, they're gonna grow, they're gonna loop around and things like that. So we've got some blank areas there and above the Java fern where I just want some greens peeking over the top and to the side. So I've got a few stems of Rotala, Rotundifolia, and a few more of Hygrophila polysperma. This one's a really vibrant, nice green that stays relatively small le uh, leafed in like highlighting. The Rotundifolia gets a slight pinky sort of orangey hue, which should give some more colors as well. I think that looks great. We're not over planting it, so the plants we have got in there aren't going to just take over in no time at all, which is always the danger with such a tight sort of bowl to work in. Now, some people, and rightly so, will probably ask me, how are you going to clean the substrate in that? Because if you don't know, then you don't know. But basically, any of my planted tanks, I don't ever clean any substrate. You, actually, you actually don't want to do that. You want any of the waste from the fish, the snails and the inhabitants to, to go into that sand bed there. And it just keeps providing nutrients then for all of the, um, all of the plants. So that way you've got a nutrient rich substrate even more. And then if you put a few drops of uh, fertilizer in, in the water, when you change it or top it up or whatever, it just keeps everything ticking along beautifully. There's one plant we do need to add though, and that would be a floating plant. So I'm gonna add in a few sprigs of salvinia now you don't need a lot of this it multiplies in no time at all and it's really good at pulling even more excess nutrients from the water column because if there's no nutrients in the water column the algae won't be able to multiply and grow and there we go looking really good we can now put in the fish snails and shrimp so snail wise i've got a big selection kate's just done a water change on this so it's a bit fuzzy but uh, a big selection of shrimp down here and even more of a selection of the ram's horn snails we've also got a planaria that you can see there. I'll actually dose the tank to kill that in a minute because that isn't good. The reason these planaria are bad is they don't attack the adult shrimp. Any babies that are born, they can actually eat them. So yeah, you don't want them in a shrimp breeding tank, do you? And then in this tank is the fish that we're gonna be adding. So it is the ruby tetra. So that's absolutely tiny. Let me put my finger for scale. There you go. That's how small it is. So it's actually an upgrade from the tank they're currently in, in terms of actual volume. And that white stuff there, if you're wondering, is old staghorn that's died off, but it's now become a food source for the uh, shrimp. They don't tend to eat it when it's alive, but when it dies off, they are. So I'm just leaving it, because why not? Okay, so first of all, I've got about 10 snails. They're ram's horn snails and bladder snails. Snails are massively important to any part of the ecosystem. Lots of people worry about them and don't want them in a tank because they think they multiply too much. But if you keep feeding to the right level, they won't be able to multiply. They'll just stay at a sort of equilibrium balance of numbers and they just work wonders for keeping everything clear and eating any debris that's breaking down as well. Next up is shrimp. Now lots of people say that you shouldn't mix colors but I like to just put all of them together. I, they say that you get like brown shrimp from breeding if you mix the colors. I've never really found that to be the case and to be honest I'm not, I'm not worried if they do like all shrimp are cool in my opinion anyway, no matter what their color. So all good, about 12, 13, something like that in there. So first up, we've got five tiny little ruby tetra. Come on then, one of them went out. There's the rest of them out as well. So the ruby tetra can be quite shy in a new environment, so probably won't see them for a little bit. They'll hide and once they get relaxed, they will come out. But we are adding more fish as well. So I've also got a little group here of Santa Maria Enla babies, look, look at that lot. Brilliant, and one of them's got coloration as well, which is cool. Now I'm thinking that these lactors are nice diver fish for the uh, ruby tetra, but they're so tiny, they're not gonna add any bio load really to the whole bowl. And also by spreading them around to different tanks, it ensures more of a survival rate, you know, in case the tank sort of crashes or has any problems, we've got lots more of them in other, other places as well. So now that the fish are in, we can add in some beneficial bacteria. This is called a fish in cycle. And you only want to do it at this point when the fish are in because the bacteria need a food source. The waste from the fish is that food source. So two capfuls I've got of beneficial bacteria. Obviously, I always use Quick Start from API. There we go, there's two of those. Now what I'll do is I'll come in tomorrow morning and test the water straight away. If there's any signs of any ammonia or nitrite, then I'll just do a nice big water change and I'll keep doing that process until it's not showing anything. But I'm anticipating we won't be getting that at all. Not with this amount of plants. Now remember all the plants had beneficial bacteria on them as well, because they're from cycled tanks. And it's such a low fish load that I'm pretty sure everything will be fine. Now I know some people aren't particularly fans of fish in bowls, and I'm not either when it comes to large fish, like don't put goldfish in a bowl. It's just, it's just not gonna work, is it? When it comes to tiny little nano fish like this, 
in a decent size, really well planted bowl, well filtered as well technically because of that substrate system. I think it's absolutely fine. Again, that's up to you to make a judgment call, I guess. But I've had fish before, rice fish in a similar bowl to this, and they were breeding and doing absolutely great. Now, fish don't go around breeding and swimming around in nice circles, you know, completely unscared of the surroundings if there's a problem with a bowl. So for me, I think it's absolutely fine for tiny, tiny little fish. So it's a couple of days later and the ruby tetra are being far, far more uh, sort of adventurous now although they're really hard to pick up. There we go. Switch to manual focus, shall we? There we go. So they're being much more sort of brave. They come to the foreground now. They don't just hide at the back, which is what they were doing uh, when we initially put them in. And they seem to get along really well with the guppies too. So I'm happy with that. The shrimp, really, really comfortable. You know, they're everywhere dotted about, getting about their business and keeping everything nice and clean for me on that bottom. Because obviously there is no filter and no water movement apart from what the fish themselves generate. Now waste will settle, but that's why the snails and the uh, shrimp are there, which in turn, they do generate their own uh, waste, but that's what's gonna work its way into that sand bed and provide nutrients for the plants, which are already growing. I mean, this uh, polysperma at the back has already hit the surface. The very slightest of haze to the water, that will be from the wood. But in terms of like um, numbers, it's, it's doing really, really well. So as you can see, look, no ammonia, no nitrite. So we're absolutely perfect as expected, to be honest. It is technically a really low bio load for this size tank you know there's a good amount of water there with these teeny teeny tiny fish so we're all good but i just think it looks great oh <laughs> some of you would have seen this bill video by now if you haven't take a look in the uh in the video list but the cichlids are doing absolutely amazing in the tank next to them it's quite cool isn't it got those here and then them in the background so this is one of those bills that's really fun and simple and anyone can have a go at it just get yourself a bowl or even a jar something with some decent volume though it will be easier if you've got more volume because the water sort of parameters stay more stable remember keep those stocking levels low and you shouldn't have any problems at all with the water parameters and get yourself lots of fast growing plants this really does help and make the tank stabilize faster the plants need nutrients at the end of the day and they will get that from the fish waste and don't forget those floating plants either they really really do help but other than that you can now sit back and enjoy your bowl